Hi again. Today's notes are going to be labeled 4.4, Solving Two-Step Inequalities. Um, today you're going to be looking for seven things to write down in your notes. So let's go ahead and get started once you have your notes labeled. The first thing we want to make sure we understand is in order to solve two-step inequalities, it's the same rules for solving two-step equations. The first step, you will just focus on undoing addition and subtraction. And the second step, you will focus on undoing any multiplication or division. Go ahead and take time now to pause the video and write down steps one and two. Once you're done, click play to see how a few of these are done. What we're going to try first is this one. So I'm going to look for adding or subtracting first, and then I will worry about multiplying or dividing. So just remember, those are always the order that you do these two steps of the equations in. I'm going to add four to both sides since I see a negative four. These fours cancel out. All I'm left with is 5x is greater than or equal to 11 plus 4 is 15. Divide, and now this is what I can focus on. x will be greater than or equal to 3. To graph the solution, I'm going to draw my number line. I have a closed circle because 3 is a part of the solution, and I'm going to point to 4 because x needs to be greater than or equal to 4. Sorry, 3. This one, again, seeing I have addition or subtraction first, and then multiplication or division. Subtract 4 from both sides. I'm going to get 9 less than symbol and b over negative 3. I see division, so now I'm going to use multiplication to solve. Remember, when you're multiplying or dividing by a negative number, you need to flip the sign. So less than becomes greater than. And so these threes will cancel out some of the b is greater than negative 27. Be careful with these, okay, because you will see some later on. Got negative 27, negative 26, and negative 28. I have an open circle still pointing to greater than, so negative 26 will be greater than negative 27. These two you're going to try by yourself. Be careful on number two because it looks like you're going to be multiplying or dividing by a negative number. Same thing here with number three. So go ahead and pause the video and then click play when you're ready to check your work. All right, first thing we're going to do is subtract four from both sides. Hopefully you didn't focus on that three yet. Um, so we'll have negative 3d is greater than or equal to 15. I'm going to divide both sides by negative three. Because I'm dividing both sides by negative three, a negative number, I'm going to flip my sign to make it less than or equal to. So I'm going to have d is less than or equal to negative 5. My graph will be a closed circle pointing to the left. For number 3, again, I'm going to subtract 8 first. So I have w over negative 4 is greater than 1. Since I'm going to have to multiply by a negative 4 on both sides, I'm going to flip my inequality symbol to be less than, so w will be less than negative 4. This graph will have an open circle pointing to the left. How did you do? The next part is we're going to talk about the distributed property. So remember we've seen this before. We should learn this in chapter um, 3 where we are distributing the number and then solving using two steps. The only difference in this chapter is we see these inequality symbols, so we're still going to be using the same type of steps or the same mechanisms here, okay? So this one says, which graph represents the solution of negative 7x plus 3 is, so that should be greater than or equal to negative 28, or 28. So what I first need to do is distribute negative 7x minus 21 because negative 7 times 3 is negative 21. Still greater than or equal to 28. I'm going to add 21 to both sides and I'm going to get 49 is greater than or equal to a negative 7x and then I do have to divide by negative 7 and because I'm dividing by negative 7, I'm flipping the sign to be less than or equal to. So x is less than or equal to negative 7. 
Um, so the graph I would choose would be option A. That's a closed circle pointing to the left over negative 7. So what you're going to do is you're going to try these. Again, you're going to distribute first and then solve. So go ahead and take time now to pause the video. Try both 4 and 5, and then once you're done, click play. So number 4 will look like this. We're going to have 2 times k, which is 2k, and 2 times negative 5, which is negative 10, is less than 6. I'm going to add 10 to both sides. So that'll be 16 less than, those 10s cancel out, and we're still left with 2k. I'm going to divide both sides by 2. k is less than 8 on my graph. I have 8 in the middle, 7 and 9 on either side, open circle pointing to the left. Number 5, distributing negative 4. So negative 4n plus a positive 40 is less than 32. I'm going to subtract 40 from both sides. These 40s cancel out. I'm left with negative 4n is less than negative 12. I am dividing by a negative number, and because I'm doing that, I'm going to flip my sign to make it greater than. n is greater than 3. So my number line, I'll have 2, 3, 4. Open circle pointing to the right. How did we do? This one you're going to try as well. Um, notice, though, that whenever you're trying it, the variable is on the right side. So maybe go ahead and once, you're sol once you have solved it, you can rewrite it with the variable on the correct left side. So go ahead and pause the video now. All right, here we go. We're going to distribute first. So 0.5 times 8 is 4. 0.5 times y is 0.5y. Less than or equal to negative 3. I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. So I get negative 7 less than or equal to 0.5y. I am going to divide both sides by 0.5. Um, dividing both sides by 0.5 is the same thing as multiplying by 2. So you should have gotten negative 14 is less than or equal to y. But I'd like for you to rewrite that. So that's going to actually look like y is greater than or equal to negative 14. Okay. So I've got negative 14 on my number line, negative 13 and negative 15 on either side. I'm going to have a closed circle with the arrow pointing to the 13. Okay, so there's your answer for number 6. The last one is number 7, and I want to just read this with you, and you, we can work it this out together. It says, you plan to purchase an e-reader that costs $403. So far, you have saved 226 and you plan to save an additional $20 per week maybe 20x. Um, write and solve an inequality to find the number of weeks it will take you to save at least 403. So remember at least would be greater than or equal to. So what I have here is I'm trying to save up to $403. So I wrote 20x, that means $20 per week, 20 times x, plus the 226 that I've already saved should be greater than or equal to $403. Okay, to solve I'm going to undo addition and subtraction first, so minus 226 from both sides. 403 minus 226 is going to give me, what, 177? Yep. Um, is greater than or equal to 20x. I probably will get a decimal here after I divide. Okay, so when I have 177 divided by 20, I'm going to get, what's that, 8 times? 160, I get 7, 17 left over. Go ahead and 178 times again. And then it goes into 105 times. So it says, write and solve an equal to find the number of weeks. So it's going to take me approximately. Get my answer over here. X will be greater than or equal to 8.85. Okay, and my graph, I just have 8.85 here, 9 and 8, it's going to be a closed circle pointing to the right. Okay, that's going to conclude our video today. Make sure that you have all your seven things written down and tune in next time.